Hello YouTube fans, here again. And I'm thinking about a do why not this one. Do 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 I'm gonna make you a deal that you never forget. I'm gonna make you a part of the family. I'm making a deal for you. Doesn't do a shit job of Mary Bando from the Dodd Farfer. That's right, the Dodd Farfer. From 1972, the Dodd Farfer. As you know, in 1972, this won a lot of Ami Awards. And when you think about it, this takes the look of dance to films. As we know, as we know, from the 30s to the 50s and a little bit of the 60s, we had what you call dance to films. You know, Al Capone and all this. And they were dying out, late 60s, you know, you had Fiat Arm, you had the Hippie Revolution and all this, and dance to films, they were like a dinosaur, they became extinct. It was only in 1972, they decided to bring back the dance to movie, that being the Dodd Farfer. You had Marlon Pando, you had El Pacino, you had J.V. Jade, May West, and a lot of other well-known actors. And they wanted to give it a new look of dance to films, make it more realistic, the family, the mafia, the Italians, and so on. So at the time, Marlon Pando, same there, was doing an erotic film, we all know being a... Um, the last tando in Paris. And at the time he was getting a lot of stick. It was like an erotic film, it was very warm, so I told us now I've seen Last Tando in Paris. It's kind of mild compared to what you see nowadays, but back in that era it was a bit warm, so. so he wanted to change the look and he decided he wanted to do some of his acting talent. So he did the Godfather. He wasn't that old at the time, man in Bando, but they made him look old, made him look older and so on. Had his hair slipped back and everything. Had his pestle put fake wrinkles on him, puffed out his cheeks. And a lot of people made fun of him. I'm going to make you a deal. you never forget. This is the family. The family, way. I don't know if I'm doing a shit job. But yeah, a lot of people make fun of how man in Bando is. But when you think about it, and I will offend man in Bando, I think he really did a good job in this film. Fuck it, shoot me. I think he did a really good job. You can see he was putting his art in it. He was trying to do a different acting role than what he's ever done before. I really think he did a good job. Danny, compared to Superman the movie, where I think he demanded more money, and I've got to admit that was Gina, and half the time he was reading lines of his fucking hands. In this, I've got to admit, Marlon Bando did a really, really good job. And as you know, in 1974, when they did the Dodd Farfer Part 2, Robert De Niro researched how Man in Pando acted. He got all the old film off the Dodd Farfer. So that and he made another star being Robert De Niro. Which I'll get to when I do Dodd Farfer 2. So where can I go with it? One thing with this one is it's definitely a lot more fire than your old dance films. I cannot forget how fire this film was, especially for 1972. This like Ultra fire the first time when you see with Jeffy Trade get shot up, practical blood streaks, very fishy scene. So I forget how fire this film was. So you got the opening, that's how you got the classic music. Do 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 You got a ready, you got this one die very sorry for yourself. I'd just love to see where Mary Bando snaps up and slaps him one and says, I want you to be a man. And it's always that funny, I had a few chuckles there. Jimmy Chains, you got the idea he's the older buffer, you got the idea he's a bit wild, he's having it away with one of the pine mates and a bit of anky panker. And he's sort of like the wild one, he's definitely wild. And then you've got Al Pacino with one of his very first films, a film that definitely started his career. And at first it wasn't no fin off it, but halfway through the film he gets swatted really badly and he wants to help out the fan there. And you, you've got the, the actors, very beautiful in that era. You might remember the beginning, Adrian in the Rocky films. This is one of her early roles. She managed to die, you've got the idea he's a woman beat and he beats her up. David Jane finds out, really lazy into him, and I mean really lazy into him, because he fucking batters him, and rightly so, because I don't like women beaters myself. 
And um, like I say, Al Pacino has a door. He, that's his plan is he shoots one die in the neck, really fish with C, shoots the other one. And it's like I said, for a dancer film, this is really, really violent. The era, this was one of the most violent dancer films ever made in that era. And let's not forget the horse's head. You got this one die, he's in love with this racing horse, but he double trusts the math for the family, and that's where he gasses them up, but he does something to piss them off. He really, really do. Wakes up and finds his horse's head in a bed to cut his head off. And he's opening the dog that didn't kill a real horse. So he's opening it with practical special effects. I mean, it was really good practical effect. But that's where that saying comes from. If you, pick, if you fuck with me, you're going to find an horse's head in your bed. You're going to find a stallion's head in your bed. In this case, let's not forget that scene. So, halfway through the film... Timmy Tate finds out that he, the dad's beating up his wife again, being his sister. He's in temper, he dies off. Well, he doesn't know his, his other dancers get to him. They shoot him to shit. Practical blood strikes. They really shoot him up. This is like before World Bowl Top. One of the mafias kick him in the face and obviously he dies. It's that hard to watch now, as we know. Devin Tate, the actress, that is no longer with us. May he rest. Man in band all physically see him in the mod, he's really breaking out his tears. Again, a really good performance by Man in Bando, and the dog far for. Then, halfway through the film, Man in Bando, I like the way they age him in the film. I've got to admit, I love the way they age Man in Bando in the film. It's like I say, he wasn't really that old when he did this. So, he's playing with one of his tan kids, he has an heart attack, basically, and dies. Then Al Pacino takes over because it would it what would have happened is that the dog bar for being the dad would have died. The generation, it's a generation, it's family, I get it. It would have gone to the older buffer. But because he died, it goes to the longer buffer, being Al Pacino. There's bits you could have timed down, I know it was a long film, like there's a bit where Al Pacino gets married to his first wife and she gets killed in a car explosion. That you could have just timed down because it doesn't mention it halfway through, it doesn't mention it in the sequel or anything. That you could have just chimped down and make the space, the pace in this a lot faster because I forgot how much of a long film this is. And I do know he gets married again, he has a child and so on. But halfway through the film, Abitino is a lot more ruthless than Marlin Bandol's character. He's definitely ruthless. He gets his trumpets on the ones that killed his brother, they get shot to shit and killed. One of them's in a massage place, so the guy walks up, shoots him in the face. Again, really fine. And he goes and sees the one who battered his sister. At first you think he's not going to get killed, but he's in a car. Somebody gets a rope or I think a wire on his neck, gets stangled. Ultimately, he kicks his leg in the air, smashes the car window. And it drives off, and then you get the idea he's now the next dog far for. Tyler foils on him, that one. But it's like I said, it's like I said, the dog far for the 1972 won a lot of awards, rightly so. Won a lot of Emmy awards, rightly so. And like, like I say, for a dance to film for the early 70s, I forget, I fucking forget how fire this film was. This film was like ultra fire, even today. In today's standards, it's like bloody violent. But I like it, I respect it. Because it brought back the look of the Danster films. Without the Dodd Farfer, you wouldn't have got Once Upon a Time in America. Or you wouldn't have got the sequels to the Dodd Farfers. You wouldn't have got the Dud Ferris or anything like that. So the Dodd Farfer basically bought, in my eyes, my eyes, the landing mark for Danster films again. He put the landing mark for dance to films again. I did them a new light. Like I say, Al Capone and all these other ones that were out in the 30s and 50s. Normally it's just bang, bang, you're dead. There's never any blood. You die and see you get the big stock of done. People get shot up for that era. You could see blood. You see practical blood splats and any of that. No bad language was allowed. But in 1972, it was like ultra fire. Very ultra fire. And it gave to do look to dance to films. So compared to some of the shit the way it's money on nowadays, like 
fucking remakes and all this other shit. It's just professing to go back in an era where you had good actors like Al Pacino, Marin Bando, I would say Robert De Niro, even though he's not in this one, he's in that one. But good actors like that, which you never see ever again. Marin Bando, may he rest. Devin Jade, may he also rest. You know what I mean? But that's the Dodd Father in 1972. We need to them. Be smart, be safe, fuck it, it's a classic. A 10 star rating for me, please do that. Be smart, be safe. See you later.